by General Electric Hydro. The plant makes equipment for dams around the world, but this one breaks all the records. It's so big that GE hired a special multi-wheel truck to move it. The truck belongs to, the, to Mammut, the Dutch company that helped lift the sunken Russian submarine Kursk last year. Moving at a snail's pace, the convoy was the center of attention in Lachine last night. The water wheel is so tall that hydro lines had to be lifted out of the way. The traffic came to a standstill for the house-sized machine. It's the second of two such wheels to make the trip from Lachine. Another 12, identical to this one, are being made in GE plants around the world. This one is now poised for a long journey by water to the dam site. Ernest Signor is the GE manager who oversaw the manufacture of the giant runner and last night's big move. Joining us from Lachine is Ernest Senior. He's manager of international projects at GE Hydro. Mr. Senior, that, uh, that was an amazing move. Tell us what it was like. Uh, well, there were qu quite a few challenges to overcome in moving such a piece because it was uh, really at the limits of uh, capacity of, uh, of many different factors, including our... Uh, our crane and our building structure, uh, we had to get a special uh, truck with uh, 256 wheels uh, to allow the load of the runner to be spread across uh, the roadway. So, uh, have, you ever, have you ever been involved in a move, uh, anything like this before? Uh, no, and that's really what, what differentiates this one. Is that This is the first time that a, a runner of this size has been manufactured in a plant. Uh, normally, these, uh, these runners of this size are assembled at site. To, uh, to avoid the, the, the constraints of transportation. So now, t uh, tell me what this runner or water wheel, whatever we want to call it, wh what role will it play once it's uh, in China at the dam? Okay, uh, this runner, as you mentioned, it's, it's a water wheel. It's a distant uh, relative of the, the water wheels that were used for you know, flour mills. Uh, and it, it really is the, it goes at the heart of the turbine. Uh, the, the, the role it plays is that uh, water uh, coming from the uh, from the reservoir uh, flows in through this runner at the rate of a uh, thousand cubic meters a second so that's about a thousand tons a second uh, and this uh, runner transforms the, the potential energy of that water into uh, uh, mechanical energy uh, and then it, it is coupled to a generator which transforms the mechanical energy into electrical energy uh, is it why is why does the wheel or the runner have to be so big uh, it, it's really the function of, of, of the project site. Uh, uh, there's uh, all kinds of, of calculations that go into deciding uh, whether you're going to have uh, multiple units. You, you can have many more units. In, in this case, the dam has 26 units. Uh, they could probably have put more smaller machines, but uh, it's, uh, it's really a function of the optimization of the, of the cost of the project. You don't think there was anybody saying, well, if we're going to build this dam, let's have the biggest dam wheels we've ever had? Uh, well, that, that could be part of it. That could be part of it, yes. So how, what, how, what kind of challenge was this for your company and your factory? Uh, well, the, the, the challenge goes all the way uh, back to the foundries. Uh, we, we could only found uh, two or three foundries in the world that could cast uh, pieces as heavy as, as uh, the components that go into this runner. And uh, uh, the same for machining. We had to have special equipment devised to, uh, to handle this, this equipment. Um, it's, uh, th th basically, this runner is made out of stainless steel castings. It's all stainless steel. And it has three components, uh, which basically is the crown on top, uh, the band at the bottom, and there's 13 blades that are welded into the, into the assembly. And there's about 25 tons of uh, weld material that goes into the assembly of uh, the blades to the crown and band. Well, it, you know, it's so big. It, was it even possible to move it around while it was in the factory, you know, to get under it or around it? Uh, what, what we do is we, uh, we have developed a process here where the equipment comes to the runner. Uh, so it, 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 it is stationary for most of the processes in the plant uh, after assembly. Once it's, once it's assembled in a complete assembly, uh, heat treat furnaces, uh, manipulating devices, robots for welding, all uh, come to, to the runner. Now, Mr. Senior, the thing that amazes me about this is that there, you made two of these, and there's 12 others being made in different places in the world. How can they be made so that they're identical? Uh, the first thing is that for, for this particular runner, there's what we call a hydraulic design. Now, we, uh, GE Hydro, have designed uh, the hydraulics for the first uh, 14 machines, which is uh, the first phase of this project. 
the first six were designed here in Lachine, and uh, the other eight were designed in our uh, other operation in Oslo, Norway. And, uh, and, and these are, are uh, designed to very, very tight tolerances, and you can manufacture them uh, identical, identical runners anywhere in, in the world. Now, you said that it was, uh, it was a challenge just to move it around and get it, uh, get it out of your factory. Uh, what about at the other end, when it actually gets to the dam? Is it going to be a huge challenge to put it into place? Uh, it, it's a little easier there, because uh, uh, once, once we move to the Port of Montreal, uh, th this, this weight is beyond the capacity of the Port of Montreal, so we can only use ships that have uh, uh, gear uh, on board. So, uh, you know, in the case of this runner, there's going to be a ship with two 450-ton cranes that will lift the runner on from the barge onto the ship. Uh, and it does the same thing in Shanghai when it gets to China. Uh, it is then loaded onto a customer barge, which sails another uh, 1,000 kilometers uh, to the project site. Uh, when, once it gets to the site, it, it is relatively uh, easy to lift because we have uh, very heavy cranes that have to lift the entire assemblies. So those cranes are in the 1,000 uh, to 1,500 ton capacity. So uh, give me a little bit of a, a trip itinerary. Where is the uh, runner, the wheel, right now? Uh, the runner right now is on the side of the Lachine uh, dock. We call it the, the Lachine Basin. And uh, the, the truck will be rolled on to the barge and uh, the runner positioned on supports and uh, the truck will back out. And uh, uh, the runner is strapped to the barge to make sure that there's no movement uh, during the sailing. And uh, it will sail to the port of Montreal in about, uh, it takes about an, a day and a half uh, to get there. And then from Montreal, how long does it take to get to China? It takes uh, five or six weeks. Uh, the, depending on the routing of the of the ship, if they have other ports of call. Now, uh, let me ask you one more thing, Mr. Senior. I mean, obviously, gr you're taking great care with this. Uh, is this thing as big as it is? Is it fragile? Uh, not really. It's it's designed to uh, to run under very high uh, high loads and high stresses. Uh, uh, it's uh, the stresses imposed on it in operation are are are, are much more significant than uh, during transportation. But you don't want to drop it? Uh, well, we certainly don't want to drop it, and uh, there's not much risk of that because it's, it's, uh, it's manipulated very carefully with hydraulic jacks uh, in, in, in you know, small fractions of a, of a centimeter. If you had to look at all the technologies that have been involved in building this and moving it and putting it in place, is there one that you think is particularly fantastic? Uh, well, one of the one of the things we, we had to develop here uh, to to turn the runner and reposition it in different uh, processes is uh, you can either use a crane with slings uh, to to rotate the runner. That this is quite a tricky operation uh, and uh, potentially risky. So we developed a special device uh, that that lifts it. We call it a flipper. It lifts the runner around the center of gravity, and, uh, and this allows rotating it with with uh, um, with j just a small crane. Uh, in any position. It also allows us to lift it and have a track b b uh, truck back up underneath it. Wow, it's quite a project. Thanks a lot for telling us about it, Mr. Senior. You're welcome, Jay. Ernest Senior is manager of international projects at GE Hydro. He joined us from